Hey, this is not in the quick speed shop. Check it out. I got my blue campus fresh in here. I'm working on the tailgate. Oh man, it looks bent. There's nasty blue corner things I added. I don't know, but check it out. The tailgate. It works awesome. It didn't do that before. And I had a gas link. I had to take the gas tank out. And I had to cut the exhaust off to do that. It's up and down and around, but here it is. Bam! Ford! Camper special. Starting today. Let's start fixing this thing. Okay, I've pulled my 77 Camper Special forward into the shop. Uh, I haven't done too many videos on this truck because I bought it way before I was doing YouTube. But essentially it's a 210,000 mile uh, 77 F250 Camper Special XLT Lariat. Um, or well, yeah, I guess it's XLT. Anyways, 460 C6 Dana 60 rear end. Um, originally Bahama blue with dark blue medium metallic on the top. Uh, it's one of a few hundred with this paint color. I ran the Marty report on it. But then at some place along the way, it was painted, uh, repainted Bahama blue, but they put Wimbledon white on the top and Wimbledon white down the sides. Now I bought this truck in 2009. Dent sides weren't a thing. I This truck was on Craigslist. I just found it on Craigslist. They had dual wheels on it with after, aftermarket fenders and adapters like Elko or uh, with Aerocraft adapters, I think. And I wanted a dually at the time just because I wanted a dually. And I saw it on there and it was on Craigslist a few towns away for like, I don't know, like $2,200 or something. And I was able to finally talk to the guy into selling it for $1,900. If you can believe it or not, I got a pretty much rust-free, pretty straight, 460 powered 77 camper special for $1,900. But it was 2009, back before these trucks went through the roof in value. So uh, I've been driving it and using it. I took the dual wheels off because the fenders were kind of rough and it needed tires. And uh, I had put box sides in it, uh, patch panels, because they had torched the wheel wells out of the box for whatever reason when they put the dualies on it. You didn't need to. But they did, and I'm going to guess that the box wasn't really rotted. They just ruined it by torching it. But um, So I put patch panels in it. Let me walk you around here so you can see what I'm talking about. And I did it in this garage. I thought I had more room to work in here on this truck, but apparently not. Um, I put patch panels in it here. This one, there's a patch panel from here, and you can see the weld seam under the trim and then down. So it's got one on this side, and I did the same thing on the other side. And that was like 2010 or 11, I did that. So this has been an epoxy primer since then, about 13, 14 years. And one of the things I want to do is I bought paint to paint the box, uh, some just enamel, single stage enamel or whatever. And, uh, well, not single stage, enamel I believe it is. I don't think it's urethane, I think it's enamel. Anyways, I have some Bahama Blue and I have some Wimbledon White. This truck's not getting any better. Uh, the bed is shot. Uh, the body works close on the patches, but they're not perfect. But I got I took the bed liner out, and I took my dump box out of this, and I got looking at the bed, and it's hammered. It's got a hole in it here where they had a gooseneck ball and also had a fifth wheel in it at one point. It's all uh, got a bunch of rot holes in the front. It's got rot holes in the wheel wells. And then this is the big thing. Watch this. Both uh, sides are rotted where the framework attaches. We're going to fix that. And I think I'm just going to scuff it and shoot it. Just scuff it and shoot it. Don't do anything else with the body work. Don't do anything with all the chips. I put my bed liner back in it, which will come over to here on the edge. You can kind of see where it rubbed before on the paint. But I'm going to use that paint up before it goes completely bad. We're just going to scuff this. Probably not in this video, but like soon. Scuff and shoot it. I've got most of the racetrack trim to put back on. I'm just tired of seeing it in primer. Like a, a crappy paint job with paint that kind of matches is going to be better than crappy paint and scratches and dents or, uh, you know, paint right off it and uh, primer in the middle with no trim. So I might as well use the paint up. I got a quart of each. It should be able to do it. Shoot a couple coats on. But you can see uh, there's chips in it here and the paint's all faded. I'd probably try to rub this out again. It's all faded. It's starting to really come off the truck now. The hood is big chunks are coming off. I can see bare metal here. I gotta I gotta 
we'll touch that up. I don't think I got enough paint to paint the hood and it wouldn't match the truck if I did that then anyways, but it's really starting to, <clears throat> to burn off here to paint. You can kind of see it's all crazed if you get really close. There's not much left to it. So what should really happen to this truck? It should be it should be taken all apart and repainted. It's got a couple pinholes here and there in the doors and and the paint is worn thin like I showed you on the hood and the fenders and everything. There's a couple of soft spots on the roof around the edge near the drip rail. It really should come all apart, get stripped down the bare metal, have all the dents and rust fixed and you know be be repainted. I don't have the the time or the inclination to want to do that right now at this time. So we're just what we're going to do for now, we're just going to fix the box, weld on some extra gussets to keep the box together. Eventually I'm going to go get a another box for this. Um, I might even use like an 80 to 96 box because I think the floor and the mounts and the inner structure is pretty much the same. And then just hang 77 skins on the outside of it. You can buy new skins, you know, aftermarket now. It's just too much. I this it, there's so much damage in the floor of this and the front piece and all that stuff this box is pretty much hammered and i've already patched it and there's a little bit of warpage in it and stuff it's 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 too too rough to fix it take too much time it'd be better to get a better better floor and put new skins on it or something but we're not going to do that now i, I do want to fix this though because you drive the thing and it it does that the whole time you're driving it drives you nuts so we're gonna we're gonna gusset the box fix that up um I want to be able to put my bed liner back in it because the bed liner really, really does a good job of protecting the inside of the bed. You don't know the hole in the floor is there and stuff. It's pretty, pretty strong. It's an old plastic style one, so it's pretty heavy duty. So you can't tell the box is all trashed when the bed liner's in it. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna get just sand the box sides down, scuff the paint up really good. Not even fix any. I'll probably have to prime these bare metal spots, but most of these are underneath the bed liner. I just want to shoot that paint I got on it, you know, make it blue and white again so I can put the trim back on. And just, you know, eventually this, well, it's epoxy primer. I guess it could last forever outside, but the primer's chalky. Every time you lean on it, get get chalk on you. So it really needs some paint on it, and I've got the paint, so I might as well use it. So, so in this video, we're going to fix the box. The first thing that's got to happen, though, is the rear gas tank's got to come out of this. When I bought this truck, it has it's got two tanks. And I just run it on the front tank. The rear tank, uh, when it had the dual wheels on it, they had run a, extended the filler neck into the fender and it was all leaking and dry rot and stuff. So I didn't use the rear tank. And then when I took the, uh, dual, wheel, the dual wheels off it, I didn't have a, a filler neck for the longest time because I couldn't find one. So I never used the rear tank. In the meantime, it sat with moisture and stuff in it. It's got some rust in it. And I think it's got some old gas still left in it because I can smell it. But... Um, it's been leaking like, like the straps a little bit dripping here and there. So they, the rear tank's junk. So before I do any welding or stuff like that, I want to take the rear tank out of it. So I'm going to climb under there, unbolt the straps, drop the rear tank out, throw that away. Um, eventually I'll get another rear tank, a new rear tank. They're pretty cheap, like 120 bucks. Throw a new rear tank in it, but I don't want to be welding on the box with the tank in it. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of nastiness coming off the bottom of this tank. I don't know how much gas is in it. Who's to say? What does this do? Uh, that goes to the... Oh, let's go to there. That's the brake control wire. It's kind of randomly hanging in here. Okay. Spare tire holder is gone. I put this dual exhaust on here a while ago. Ooh. Oh no, what's going on here? It's loose up there, head in the muffler somewhere. I'll check that out. Uh, these are tailpipes for, I believe, I bought the tailpipes or Flowmaster kit for like an 80 to 96 Ford, but I made it work on here on the 77. And unfortunately, they're aluminized, and I got a little bit of rust here on the bends, but it's several years, they're 10 years old, 
So they're hanging in there. It just uh, looks like they're not going to last forever. But I don't know why it's loose up there. I'll have to investigate that later. Anyways, they should be out of the way enough to get the tank down because the bottom of the tank straps drop off here. I didn't spray any goo on here, but Ford tanks are pretty easy to get out. They got two uh, straps. We take them off the bottom, the tank should drop right out. What's going on with the filler neck? I can't see that. Uh, let me spray some... Uh, I smell old gas. I smell it. I smell old gas. I'm going to spray some uh, stuff on these bolts, but this truck is pretty... Uh, Pretty nice underneath, so a lot of stuff's not really severely rusted on it. I believe these are 3 8 bolts. You can try to use the impact to bust them free. This truck's not real rusty, so it should want to come apart fairly easily, but we'll find out here in a second. Ah! Okay, it's heavy. Uh, where are you guys at? You're over there looking. Where am I? At? I'm over here looking. Yeah. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah. So are these 916s? Yes, they are. Let's, let's see what happens here. Oh, airfall. There we go. Oh, there's one. I think I'll leave them loose on there just a little bit so the tank doesn't fall out my face. I'm hoping it doesn't have hardly any gas in it because I want to say that it doesn't. We'll find out in a second. Oh, easy. <laughs> How heavy is it? What the? Why the heck did it come down like that and now I can't push it back up? Nothing nice. Ah. If you're wondering, this half inch impact is very heavy to hold up in the air when you're trying to do stuff. Why is that not going on? There's a nut still in that. Can't see, it's freaking dark under here. Try it again. Get on there. All right. Get that on there. Where did that go? There we go. Oh, boy. Oh. Come on. Okay, we got... Oh, the lines are... Hmm. Got some wiring. Where does this go? Over here. Wires. You guys can't see what I'm looking at, but trust me, I'm looking at something. What the hell? The wires go over here. Is there a plug? Yes, there is. Same sending it and plugs over here, hopefully. I think that's a plug, it looks like it. Yep. Next question is, can I unplug it? Well, break it. Because I can't see. All I'm looking at is pumpkin. Ah, oh, got it. There we go. Up here, do you see it? I got the fuel line. We got the, the wire for the sending unit. If I put you over here, can you see better up there? Be my eyeballs. I can't see what I'm working on. All I know is I'm laying in the dirt. That sucks. So we got a ground screw we got to get loose. We got the fuel line right here, right? Where is it? Can you see it? Right there. Got to get to that and uh, unhook it and take the ground screw out. So let me hook you back over here. We'll get the tank down because I can't hold on to you and a wrench at the same time. Come out of the frame hole with my exhaust system here. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Hmm. If I can get the back down, maybe. Oops. The problem is the... Oh, it's... Ah, it's dripping on me. 
Don't trip on me. Dang it. Where's my bin? Dripping on me. I wonder if we can... If the hose would let go, that would help. I need you to let go. It's like ripped all the way around. And this feels like it's got like multiple gallons of gas in it. It definitely sounds like multiple gallons of gas. That tailpipe is screwing me. Can I push it out of the way enough? Oh, maybe. Maybe the broken hanger is our friend. Nope, it won't move enough. Out of the way. Mm. What I really need to do is get the bottom to come out first. If I can push it up. So it won't. If this pipe was out of the way, it would fall right out of here. Let me go up and investigate what we gotta do. So that's loose now. The tank should wanna. What's this? Can't see nothing. What is this? An old exhaust pipe hanger that somebody left in there. And it's bound. What in the world? The tank should just want to... Oh, there we go. What do we got up here? One strap in the middle. Got to get our lines over. Yep. Should just want to lay down on the ground like that. Aha! Oh, there's two straps up here. Aha! Boom! There we go. Yeah, there's a gallon or two left in there. Well, I don't believe it, but I got to. I'm looking right at it. Here's our tank. Here's our ground I broke off. Here's the sending unit. Probably original fuel line. Um, like I said, yeah, it feels like it's got a gallon or two in her. Let's see if it, any will come out of the... That's ah, not much. It's not much. This is... Not a... It's not much in there at all. It's like a splash. Took a brass punch and I punched a hole in that weak spot of the tank. Now I got our drain in here into the drain pan. Hopefully it slows down soon because this drain pan doesn't hold more in a quart. Or I mean a gallon. This gas, uh, last time I put gas in this tank is when I bought the truck and I went to put it in the filler neck and the hose was rotted rot off and it leaked right on the ground immediately. So I stopped putting gas in it and started using the front tank. And that was 2009. So this gas is way, way old. But it looks like it only had about a, a gallon in it. Hopefully it stops coming out soon. That'd be a bonus. So... You can get new tanks cheap on a Rock Auto or whatever. They're like a hundred bucks. So that's yeah. It only had a gallon in it, so it's been leaking slowly out, anyways. But we'll uh, I'll uh, order up a new tank. What's going on here? Take this guy outside and let it evaporate. Yeah, the, gra the gas is like green. 
Actually, it smells like gasoline, but... Oh, it smells like dirty old gasoline. Like I said, it's 13 years old, so... I guess I'm going to dump this in my oil jug, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I've changed my attention to fixing the box here. Um, as you can see, the sheet metal here, this is all cracked, and this side was laid way out. I've actually pulled it in with this ratchet strap here. I've got, um, I've got it, I had a hole in the floor, so I put a eye bolt through there. Now I'm pulling on it just to get it to go. So I'm gonna tack weld up, or weld up this original tab that was down here that's cracked right off. It's also broken down below, but I've got a cure for that. I've made a, a piece here out of uh, eighth wall two by three tubing, and I'm gonna triangulate this uh, here the tailgate stays flush of this so I can weld it all the way around up here and make a big triangulate triangulization to tie into there um, It won't affect the Tailgate at all and if you want to put plywood in it, you know the, the eight foot or the four foot width ends way over here You're inside the wheel well, so it shouldn't affect it at all and uh, It'll give a ton of strength triangling tri triangulating this in so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna bust out the MIG welder I pulled this side first because it was the uh, the most uh, loose. The tailgate's got a lot of side-to-side -side motion in it, and it was hard to figure out. I was trying to pull it first, and it was getting all out of whack. So I pulled this guy, and I used the straight edge to make sure this is 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tack it, and then we'll close the tailgate, make sure it still works, and then I'm going to then we'll lay this piece up in here, tack that, and then make sure that still works, and then burn this guy in here, and that should add a ton of strength to this. Finish welding that up. So I'll just finish welding that up and then we'll tackle the other side. All right, I got the other side welded up here and uh, primed up. Take a look at this. I found this nasty old blue. It's kind of like a Ford blue, but it's not. Where'd this can go? Look at this. How old is this? Krylon True Blue. I don't know what the date is on it, but this appears to be old. And it sprays like it's old. Check this out. It kind of like comes gooing out of here. Ready? Ah, now it's going everywhere. Uh-oh. Let's try that again. Like it, it doesn't, it's so old it doesn't spray. It just kind of streams. So you just got to kind of like get it on there. Ah, this is making a mess. That's okay. I just wanted to get use up this nasty random blue, which is junk. I guess you put it all on in one coat. That's what you do. This is just for uh, grins and giggles. This tailgate still wants to wander. Well, you know what? Both these guys were bent out a little bit from the, t the box being spread. Let's 
try that. Huh? Now why in the world? There we go. You just got to get the right, because the tailgate still wants to slide around a little bit. I don't know if they're supposed to be like plastic in there, like the newer ones, or it just is what it is, but the tailgate kind of wants to wander around just a little bit. I mean, obviously we made it better, way, way better than it was. It was all loosey-goosey, and the tailgate had like, I don't know, half an inch of travel side by side. Now, does this dry? Well, it dries. It closes night. If you open the latch first, you can do that and latch it without slamming it. So that's what I'll do, but it's way, way tighter than it was. It used to be like, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang, ba bang, all around. And uh, that's almost like new ish. I mean, it closes. If you do the handle, it closes real nice. It's also missing a rubber bumper over on this side, which probably doesn't help. But I'll, but I'll take that. That's that's a way better. Bam! Fixed! That's that with that. Uh, I got the tailpipe in the back. I found... Where is it? I found I got a, uh, a coupling. I had my exhaust stash here. I got a... Pipes are two and a half inch. I got a two and a half to two and a half inch coupling. So I'm going to weld this on one end, and then I'm going to slip... Use it, use it as a slip joint, and I've got a clamp so I can clamp that tailpipe back into place. And then I've got a new... Uh, a new hanger I found here. I got a clamp and a hanger so I can reclamp, put a new hanger on the frame with a new clamp there to hang the tailpipe back up. So I'll be working on that off camera, but I gotta wait till I get the gas tank. I wasn't gonna replace it right away. I was gonna run it just on the front tank like I've been all these years. But once I put the tailpipe on and reclamp that piece, I'm not gonna be able to get it off again because that, that, you know, it distorts the pipe and you got a heck of a time getting it apart. So, I mean, the tank's got to be changed anyways. I might as well just order one and put it in there. And uh, I got to get a new fuel hose for the thing, too. That's all dry rotted out. So I got to get a hose, a tank. Probably get a sending unit if they're cheap. But I'll put it all brand new. The straps are good. And just put it all brand new in the back here. I mean, it's out. Might as well do it, I guess. And then... Like, and when I bought the truck in 2009, the tank selector worked from front to rear because I originally, the actual factory tank's in the back and the side saddle tank is the auxiliary tank. So I've been running on the auxiliary tank for like 11 years. But the, the trucks, if they had a single tank, they're in the back. And you can also do, I think, a Bronco tank upgrade. And I think the Broncos had a great big, like, 36-gallon tank or something. I think you can put a Bronco tank in the back, kind of like I put the Ram Charger tank in my Dodge. But I don't, I don't need like 60 gallons worth of fuel capacity for this truck. I'm not going to, it doesn't really, it stays around town. But I do want to set it up for more trailer action. Well, I got the tank out. I found my wire for my brake controller. I'm actually going to put a, a battery cutoff switch up in this like I did in the Dodge truck. If you go back and watch that video, I explain how to do that. And uh, I've got a negative cable. It's kind of iffy here. So I'm going to put all new battery cables on. I'm going to put a... Uh, switch in it and I have an electric brake controller just kind of hanging out under the dash. I'm going to wire that up in because I want to start using this truck for uh, trailer duties. It's a big block. It's got good gears, 354 gears. I want to get some new tires for it and uh, since I took the dump box out of it, it makes it really easy to see now. My other truck, my 95 Project Green Machine, I usually trailer with that because it's got the granny, it's got the ZF5 speed of the granny first gear so it makes it nice for taking off. But that truck's like gutless. The 351's got 220,000 miles on it, and it's it's uh, gutless uphill. This thing is a 460 without overdrive, but you know a lot of torque. This will pull any trailer I want to. So I would like to get this guy dialed in to be my tr my main trailer rig, and then if I need four wheel drive, I'll use a Dodge. But uh, I've got a big block truck. I might as well use it for stuff that big block trucks are for. Is heavy hauling. So that's my plan. Get some new rubber for this later later this year when I can afford it. Hook up the brake controller. I do have an exhaust manifold gasket that's bad on the passenger side. It's been blown for two or three years. It sounds like a junk wagon. I'm going to try to change that. I think we're going to do one more video on this. We'll do uh, try to change the exhaust manifold gasket. 
get that done, then I said, like I said, I want to paint these back sides. I got to go out and look at my racetrack trim uh, and see, because when they put the dual wheels on this, they cut all the trim and ruined it. I know I got a driver's side lower trim, and I have some upper trim, and I've got the factory pieces down here. So I need to, I probably got to buy some new clips because the clips are broken and lost. Um, I got to make sure I got enough racetrack trim, and then, like I said, just sand this up real fast, just scuff it and shoot it just you know right over the scratches and everything else just to get some paint on here i might even try the vice grip uh, wipe on clear coat because the rest of the truck the paint is so faded and so nasty if i can scrub it up decent and put that clear coat on there just to keep more of the paint from burning off this will have shiny paint on it and then the wipe on clear coat to, it might it might match ish and make it a little bit nicer you know it's still going to have all the patina on it but It'll be a little bit shinier. So might do that in the future here this summer. But I want to get this guy dialed in. What also really needs to happen is it has a transmission problem. It'll sit in a leak transmission fluid. I don't know how many quarts of Type F I put in this thing. Probably 30 quarts of oil over the last couple of years. It uh, will sit for a week or two and it'll be fine. And all of a sudden it pukes out a bunch of fluid on the ground, which is telling me that probably the converter is leaking back into the transmission and it's probably puking out the front seal, maybe. I, I didn't change the seal when I had the engine out of it last time, and maybe that was a mistake. But uh, I don't know if the converter, if the plug is loose, or if it needs a new converter. I, I would like to put a shift kit in it once I get it out and fix the vacuum modulator because it seems to shift. It's in drive like at 20 miles an hour, 20, 22 miles an hour, which you don't notice with a big block because of the torque, but it shouldn't be shifting that fast. So maybe the vacuum thing on the side is is bad. I don't know. I'd, I'd really like to take the transmission out and put a shift kit in it, change and or get fixed the torque converter, new gaskets and stuff, because I'm tired of it leaking transmission fluid everywhere. <laughs> it's like, I got to watch where I park it. So... That's really the only thing that's wrong with it. Oh, actually, it needs a rear pinion or a rear, rear uh, pinion seal too in the rear end. I gotta get one of those. It's got the Dana 60. It actually needs to put new brakes on the back of it. I've had those for a while. I've got a whole pile of parts. I've had been sitting on parts for like three years, and I just never get around to it because I don't use the truck that much. But now I want to start using it. So I think it also needs a master cylinder because it once in a while the pedal acts weird. So it needs some brake work. Needs emergency brake cables for sure. Needs a gas tank. Needs exhaust manifold gasket. Needs a transmission leak fixed. That sounds like more than two videos. And it needs a box paint. That's, this sounds like 18 videos, but I can't get carried away. I want to get the C10 back in here and get that disassembled and at least sent out to the sandblaster. So maybe we'll slide this in and out in the middle. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm getting springtime allergies. I had to stop filming like 18 times to blow my nose. Great. So I'll get, I got a whole month of sneezing coming up. But at least it ain't winter. So we'll see you next time. Trucks and things, I guess. Bam. See you next time at the Quick Speed Shop.